welcome to a bonus edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to be attempting the Times Cryptic Crossword on Friday. It's something that Mark and I have been doing for the last uh, few weeks, actually, and it seems to have gone down well, so we're going to try and continue the tradition. Uh, we actually met up last night for the first time in a while, um, and we went to see Dave Gorman. Uh, Dave Gorman is on tour at the moment, the British comedian, absolutely hilarious. Uh, we saw him in Dorking. And uh, there's even, I th hope I'm not giving anything away here, there's even a section of the show about cryptic crosswords. And uh, that was absolutely lovely to see and very funny too. So wholeheartedly recommend um, Dave to you if you've not checked out the tour or indeed his cryptic crosswords. But I don't think he compiles to the t for the times as yet. So let's click the times today and... We won't know who this is by. The Times is anonymous. Um, okay, and let's go. So one across. Frenzied attack stopped by bachelor. So stopped by bachelor means put a B in the middle. It's like if you cork a bottle, you stop it. So it's going to have a B in the... So it's rabid, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So we need a four-letter word for an attack. Once I thought I needed that, I thought of raid. I put the B in the middle. I get rabid. And if you're frenzied, you're certainly rabid. Now we've got some starting letters. So... Beside Northern River, ooh, beside Northern River drinks hot punch. Roundhouse? That's certainly got H and Ooze, which is a river in it. Beside Northern River. Oh, a, a drink. Right, so if you buy a round of drinks, you buy. if you buy a round, you're buying drinks, plural. So we've got round... and H, so for drinks hot, H is a valid abbreviation for hot because you might see that on a tap, is you know, C and H. And then north, and then it's Northern River for the River Ooze. So we get Roundhouse. And um, we've actually this amazing start because we've got all of these starting letters. What are the odds of brash remark showing disdain? Okay, be on alert for this sort of clue because it comes up fairly often. What are the odds? So we might, you might see the, the opposite of this, which is the word evenly being used. Now, when you see odd and even in cryptic crossword clues, often it's saying take the odd numbered letters or take the evenly numbered letters in a phrase. And if we take the odd letters of the word brash, we get B-A-H, bar, as in bar humbug. And that's certainly a remark to show disdain, isn't it? So that feels right. So three down, perform. I'm, I'm immediately thinking do. If you perform an act, you do it. So I'm thinking three down might begin with do. Work could be op, as for opus. Uh, helping, dollop. Yeah, it is just dollop, isn't it? Without a couple of learners. Um, so we've got do for perform and op for work, as in a musical work, an opus, and then double L uh, for a couple of learners, as you might see on a car, learner driver plates are L plates. Um, and this word without, if you're new to cryptic crosswords, you'll be thinking, what on earth? Why does that mean put something on the outside of it? Well, if something is without something, it, it's it's surrounding it in cryptic crossword land. And, and that is a very common word to, to mean, put something on the outside of something else, uh, at least in this language that we're all trying to learn. So I'm thinking upholster for this without actually reading the clue. Okay, <laughs> add padding to covers of Elgar. Well, add padding to it must be upholster. Um, Add padding to covers of Elgar. Now, the covering letters of the word Elgar are E and R, so it's probably that E and R. Uh, by leading composer. Okay, so if you're leading in a match, you're up in it. So up is leading. And then Holst, you may have heard of the planets. Um, Holst is obviously a composer, so up holster is how the wordplay breaks down. Um, let's try 11 across. Dirty plate where our foods served dish lacking time dirty dishonorable i quite like dishonorable i've got in my mind i'm thinking it's got our table in it without a t but i haven't understood it so let me just put dishonorable in there obviously with the british spelling you won't see 
uh, American spellings for things like dishonorable unless it signals it in the clue. Um, so dirty. It is. It's actually it's very clever. It's very clever. So um, the dish on our table would be the plate on which our food is served, wouldn't it? The dish on our table. And if you so if we split this, if we split dishonorable up, you can say we get dish on our and then able. And that is because it lacks time. It lacks the letter T. So that's very cute. So dirty is dishonorable. And then plate where our food served, dish on our table without the T. Very cute. 14 across. Um, maybe gents, I'm thinking loo for that, it's in a toilet, uh, with ball back on, oh, it must, yes, oh, no, well, I was almost right, it's oval, isn't it, the sports ground of the oval, uh, where, where you might see some test cricket if you're lucky, um, so maybe gents is a lavatory, a lav, with ball, O, they often use ball to indicate the letter O, I think it's because it looks like a ball, um, and we turn at that lav o and we reverse it we send it backwards and we get the sports ground so far we've had an amazing i haven't actually got stuck on any clue yet that's going to be that's going to be the kiss of death isn't it right tries to ensnare republican politician in piece of fiction tries to ensnare well try i think it's going to be a word for tries it's going to ensnare, it's going to surround an R for Republican. A polit oh, some, something, something story is the answer. Politician will be Tory. Often politicians are Tories in crosswords because Tory is such a useful collection of letters. So, um, tries a piece of fiction, a short story, shots, yeah. Okay. If you have a shot at something, you have a try at it. So put shots around R. So the only reason I was able to solve this was because I could understand how the wordplay worked. Um, and yeah, that, that got me to the answer. So there, there's always two chances in a cryptic clue. Um, so get angry drunk to recover quickly. Snap out of it, I'm thinking. If you snap, you get angry. If you're drunk, you're out of it. So snap. So put those together, snap and out of it. And we get snap out of it, which is a phrase which means to recover quickly. Um, right, 21 across. This would be another useful one. Wet weather interrupting sport. So rain. It must be rain. It must begin with train spotting or something. It is... It is train. It's something like train spotting. Anorax must be. Wet weather, rain, interrupting. Oh, sport test fancy. It's tra it's train spotters. Okay. Um, sport. So fancy. Uh, if you it is an anagram indicator. It's saying if you make the letters of sport test fancy. You would you doll them up in a way, and you would potentially sort of rearrange them. And so, if we if we anagram sport test and put wet weather rain in the middle, we get train spotters, who are anoraks nerds, one of our own brethren. Um, now, what should we do? I think probably we we ought to keep going with first letters because they've been so helpful. So humming Beethoven's Ninth, duh, 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 uh, without certainty, humming. Humming can mean like smelly, niffy. Beethoven's Ninth is the letter N. Oh, that's, that's a really good clue. I really like that clue. Humming Beethoven's Ninth without certainty. So Beethoven's Ninth letter is an N. And then if something is without certainty, it's iffy. So it is niffy, and we continue our, our, I don't think I've ever done this at a times cross, where literally everything I've looked at I've been able to solve. I mean, not instantly, but right, so we've got, we've got to pick carefully. I'm going to pick, hmm, I don't know, I might pick this one with an F. Oh no, there's an F starting letter, I'm going to do that one. Full B and B has to change light source. Oh, we could be coming to a. N now, B and 
full B and B has to change. I mean, I want that to be an anagram of full B, B and has, because if we change those letters, that would be nine letters. So that would be a light source. Flashbulb. I've done it again. Flashbulb. Um, okay, so now that one, beginning with U, where one, uni, must be where one might study. E.g. Watt or Kelvin, briefly. Okay, well, Watt and Kelvin are scientific units, um, and therefore, if we treat them briefly, we could cut off their last letter, we could shorten them, and that would give us uni, which is certainly a place where we might study. So let's try that one, which has got, this looks like itched, doesn't it? Um, no, etcher, one making an impression in film dear to the French. Okay. Film, this is, some, this is a fairly common one. I mean, it's, it's amazing that this film has had such um, longevity in the world of cryptic crosswords, but the film E.T. <laughs> often makes an appearance. So film is E.T. And then if something is dear to the French, it's share. Uh, share is the French word for dear, so etcher means somebody who makes an impression, an artist who makes an impression. So sunshine, we hear rays, giving boost, good grief. I mean, this doesn't feel like a Friday Times at the moment. It feels very, very straightforward, but there's, there's no harm in that. So this is a homophone, um, and if you, get, if you catch rays of sunshine, um, R-A-Y-S, it would sound exactly the same as the word I've spelt out here, raise, which means to lift uh, or boost. So what all we had to do was come up with a word for sunshine, spell it differently, and that gives us the answer that we need. So now we've got the, 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 the quandary, haven't we? Let's try this F here, If we because then if we can get 23 down, we might be able to get 27 across. So get misty, befog, I'm thinking. Winter, winter period heading west, February backwards, that's going to be right, isn't it? Um, turn the other way, a turn is a go, if you have a go at something, you have a turn at it, and we put that the other way, we reverse it, and we get befog, this is absolutely unbelievable, so 23 down, West Bank City out of bounds for Spanish runner, ooh, okay, I think I know this, I do know this, okay, this is a, this will test your geography, so there is a, when we see the word runner in a cryptic crossword, um, it's like the word flower, where we can think of flower as being flower, something that flows, uh, a river. So flower will often indicate a river, as will runner, because rivers run. And the Spanish river, I happen to know, is the Ebro. Um, now, a West Bank city, I think, is Hebron. Um, and a Hebron, if you take the city of Hebron with, and it says out of bounds, now that means out of its boundaries. Now the boundary letters, the H and the N, the first and the last letter of Hebron, get rid of those, so we're out of the boundaries, and we get Ebro, which is the Spanish river we're looking for. Mm, now, that's, this is going to be, begin with out, isn't it? What overzealous Remainer did is exposed gathering support. I was thinking outstayed. Oh, come on. What overzealous Remainer did. Oh, well, if you... Okay. Yeah, I think that's right, actually. I think it is outstayed. It's very hard for any Brit to read anything about Remainers and Brexiters without it having a political colouring. But I don't think, I think the, the, the capitalised R here is deliberately misleading. Because I think what, what the clue is getting at is, is a guest. If you had a, a party and a guest remained for too long, you would say they'd outstayed their welcome. So an overzealous Remainer, what an overzealous Remainer did is they outstayed. So that is the definition. Now the word play is made up of two pieces. If something is exposed, it's out. And that gathers, i.e. it's next to, a word which means support. And if something, if you uh, a support, gathering support, or maybe it's gathering support for stayed. If you stay something, you support it. So gathering support, 
is stayed. I think out stayed is therefore justifiable. And you can see we haven't I haven't looked at this clue, but it must be straight, mustn't it? This one. I mean, it is straight in terms of it is straight down, but it looks like it has to be. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is another homophone. So try and read the clue, having been told that, and understand why the answer is straight. And the answer is straight because if something is straight, it is direct. And a channel on the radio, well, if you hear, on the radio is indicating it's something you might hear. So it's another of these homophone indicators. And the word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, um, is a channel, a river channel. It would be described as a straight with that spelling. So if we hear that word, you can't help hear the difference between straight and straight in those two meanings, but they have very different spellings. Now we want the one that means direct because channel on the radio is very clearly saying it's the channel that we're hearing. So we're hearing the word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, but we don't want that word because that's, that's the one that we're hearing. It's on the radio. So be careful with that to make sure you get the right spelling of the answer. Now, this one, Let's just have a look at it before. I want it to be something like Strapland or something. Um, strap band? Strip? Uh, something card? I don't know. I haven't got this. Right. Struggle with reversing vehicle. Cars are destroyed here. Scrapyard. Yeah, okay. So a struggle is a scrap. And a vehicle is a dray. It's a kind of cart, isn't it, I think? And that reverses. So we reverse the word dray to give us yard and put them together, scrap yard, which is where cars are destroyed. So we're still on this incredible run of having solved every single clue first time. Now, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for four down because... I think if I can get a little bit of help for four across, that's good. If I could get four across cold, I think we might we might have a very good chance. But I'm going to try four down. Um, believer, ortho, orthodoxist or something, has drug overdose first. Hmm. Okay. Uh, overdose is normally OD, but I can't think this begins with OD. Ah, okay. Methodist. Yes. Okay. So I, that's quite clever wording of the clue because when we see positional words or when I see positional words like first, my brain goes to that's part of the wordplay and it's telling me to put something else first in the clue. But actually, it's not that here. The way this breaks down is a drug is meth. Overdose is OD, but we put it there. And first is IST. Because this looks like if someone was in first place, that's how you might write it if this was a one. And I is the Roman numeral for the number one. So it's sort of loosely justifiable, I think. So Methodist is the answer. And that is a believer, obviously, someone who believes uh, in religion. Now, now, do we all, do we do the M first or do we try this one first? Let's, let's go for this one. Come on. Flipping gloomy end for Ted and Paramore in the go mediator or something. Flipping gloomy, end for Ted and Paramore in the go between. Me me mediator is the wrong number of letters, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, flipping gloomy. Oh no, <laughs> come on. The go-between. I should have done five down first. This is so upsetting. Flipping. I mean, flipping could be an anagram indicator. 
So if that was true, we've got we'd have six letters there. End for Ted is D. That's seven. End for Ted and Paramore. What's pa Paramore is a lover, but I can't think of a two-letter word for a lover. Sometimes you might see an old lover being an X. Flipping gloomy. Oh, glum is gloomy or dim. Mid middleman. Oh, it is. I've done it. Wow. Okay, that's harder. Right, so here, how have I got this? I don't really know, because I was obsessed with mediator in my mind. But it isn't. It is middleman, because if we flip a word that means gloomy, we, we think of the word, I thought I was thinking of the word glum, actually, but then I thought of the word dim. So we, that gives us mid. The end for the word Ted is the D. And Lehman, believe it or not, L-E-M-A-N, not as in the bank, that's a different spelling, but Lehman, L-E-M-A-N, is an old word for a lover or a paramour. And a go-between is certainly a middleman. So I'll show you, uh, I will look at the dictionary at the end to just sort of justify that. Um, but let's go with five down. Jura, I'm thinking, D-U-R-E-R, -E Renaissance man. Yeah, okay, Jura, I'm going to express, show my ignorance now. I, I would have said that Jura was a composer, actually, but maybe, maybe um, Jura was somebody a bit more like Leonardo, a Renaissance man, somebody just incredibly gifted, a polymath. Um, but the reason I'm very sure this is the answer is not just because what else could it be to fit this this congregation of letters. But if we rebuff, i.e. return, reverse, some of the letters of more rudely, you can see spelt out in there, D-U-R-E-R. -E and that, therefore, confirms that Jura is the Renaissance man that we're looking for. Now, let's go for this one. So, funky vibe, welcomed by peer. Peer is probably a lord. Inamorata, oh, lovebird. It is lovebird. Okay, so funky vibe. Um, funky is telling us do an anagram of the word vibe, and we are welcoming that, so we're including it within a, w a word for a peer. And a peer is a lord, a nobleman. So, and the way, way you get Lord very quickly is we know that the answer begins with L. Otherwise, we'd be thinking Earl or Duke. So, it must be Lovebird. Uh, it's another. So, we've, got, we've had quite a bit of love in this top corner, haven't we? We've had, we've had the Inamorata. We've had the Lehman. We've had the Paramore. And we've got the Lovebird. So, let's try mm, five letters beginning with V or this one. No, I think the five letter beginning with V is probably more drop-in velocity could be right oh drop in velocity could be right drop in visit oh it is visit okay now, again a very nicely worded clue so how do we get this well it's very important here that we split the clue in the precise position that gives us a chance to solve it and the reason we were lucky here is that we had the v so the V is clearly velocity, as in you, Newton's laws, V equals U plus a half AT squared, comes back to my mind from somewhere at school. Um, now, so V is velocity, um, which, which means that the definition is either drop or has the, we've got the possibility of it being drop in. In could be a link word between a definition and the word play, but it Yeah, but but it, but drop in is certainly a possibility for the definition. And once we think of drop in as the definition, and it begins with V. It's not hard to think of visit, and then you've just got to just justify the is it at the end or the I sit. And could that be right? You might say, is it? Is it right? So it's clearly clearly correct. So let's go for this one first. Note, I'm thinking, but 
Oh, it's, I don't think it is. Uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> I refused. I thought that was going to be no. To keep attending. Oh, NATO. Goodness me. Golly, that's quite tricky. Okay. Um, so I refuse is no, as in a rejection. And that keeps, it retains, um, attending. If you're attending something, if, you, if you're attending a venue, you're at it. And that gives you NATO, which is a Western country club. So it's not a country club as in somewhere you might go and play golf in the summer. It's, it's, it's a Western group of countries, uh, much in the news at the moment. So NATO is the answer. And therefore, I think we've got, we've got an amazing opportunity here to do the last. If I can do the last three clues cold, I've done every clue in order. Um, which I, I don't think I'll have ever done that before. Oh no, four, there's another clue as well. Right, let's try this one. Eng well, I have a chance, I've done it. In fact, I know that's what this one is. So engineering, I was instantly thinking anagram, and then I need 11 letters. Well, team is obviously in the anagram, and I can see precise is seven letters. So I need an anagram of team and precise to mean a great work that fits that pattern. Well, that's not going to... That's not going to hold us up too long. So masterpiece is the answer. And then we've got, I mean, we have to go here, don't we? I think. Suit may be thus taken off. Dis. Uh, gently going on peg. <laughs> Suit may be thus taken off. I mean, it's very hard to pass this. Suit may be thus. Um, pinstriped. I mean, it must be pinstriped. The fact that that's a type of suit and it fits this let this series of letters. I, I'm going to justify it though. So pinstriped. Why is it that? Suit may be thus. Okay, so taken off. Stripped, but that says striped. Okay, going on peg. Well, a peg is a pin, is it? Is that what we're being told? Taken off. Ah, right, gosh, you have to read this one very carefully. So taken off is stripped. Gently going. Well, if you see P on a piano score, it's, I think it's, um, is it pianissimo or is it piano? It's one or other, and it means gently. So we have to remove one of the P's from the word stripped, and that gives us striped. Um, and we put all of that on a word that means peg, and a peg and a pin, I think, are synonymous. So that gives us pin striped, which must be the answer. So let's have a look here. Let's try and think about this before we look at the clue. So, admissible, maybe? Allowed could be admissible. I mean, it must be. It is. It's an anagram. It's fairly straightforward. Bad similes. Um, so, I mean, that's hu we're hugely lucky, basically, because we could get that instantly from the letters we had. So, this is, the, this is an amazing thing. Okay, and I've got a chance. Ending in I. Delhi, retailer. Yeah, it is. I've done it. <laughs> guided. If, you, if something is guided, it's led. And that's turned around. And we put that next to Italy's capital letter, which is an I. And we get Delhi, which is a retailer. So I think that's the answer. That's absolutely bizarre. Yeah, that's absolutely bizarre. And now I'm wondering... Whether at the start of that, when I wasn't even thinking I could achieve, you know, doing every every answer sort of first time without having to go over them, whether I did actually do that or whether, whether I skipped around. I know I started with one across and then I think I looked at one down. I don't think I went anywhere else before I... I'm not sure. I hope I did. You'll have to let me know in the comments whether I've... I've overplayed my hand there, but I, I did feel, certainly for the last half of it, that I was very focused on trying to solve each clue 
for the first time we looked at it. Um, now, I wanted to just show you, let's go to the dictionary for a moment. And we're going to have a look at, um, what was it? I, I wanted to show you Lehman, just because I think that's a pretty unusual word. Um, there we go, archaic word for a lover or a sweetheart or a paramour, even lists paramour there. So that was that one. I don't think there was much else there that was sort of too arcane in terms of language. Just let me scan it for a moment or two. No, I mean, we got so lucky. I mean, we got so lucky with sort of having the right letters that allowed us to solve them, like Niffy and Ebro. I mean, Ebro I would have got cold anyway, because um, I don't, my knowledge of Spanish rivers is fairly limited, probably to just the Ebro. Um, yeah, but that was really cool. That was really... <laughs> And the things I find cool, you don't want to be talking to me at a party. Anyway, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And I hope this helped those of you who are new to cryptic crosswords. See you next time on Cracking the Cryptic.